When coming up for the concept of this video, it was something that constantly changed as I was going with the playthrough. At first I wanted to do a Bozart only playthrough, but I thought that might be a little bit too boring as kind of a concept because I get a lot of kind of, you know, if I'm just using that weapon and everything else I can use, you know, different armors and stuff. So I changed it slightly to the chosen one. Now if you don't know who the chosen one is, that is the main character of Fallout 2 and that's what this playthrough is. For this I'll have to use armor and weapons that only the chosen one would have had access to in Fallout 2. I have to only use the weapons like I said before and I have to complete quests that would relate back to the Fallout 2 character and you'll see them later on in the, the video. So that's where we're going to answer the question, can you beat Fallout New Vegas as the chosen one? I want to start this video off by saying rest in peace Mitten Squad, you are a huge inspiration for this channel. Choosing the character name is very easy, I mean chosen one, I mean it writes itself. As you can see here I didn't have much to go off with the chosen one's picture in Fallout 2 so I made the same character I've made in every playthrough ever. I made sure to put enough in luck as my main weapon is very expensive. And for some reason I decided to pick one of my tag skills as melee weapons and I have no idea why. I picked Skilled and Wild Wasteland just for a bit of fun. My only weapon for now will be the Weather 10mm pistol and the only two armors I'll have for the whole playthrough will be the Tribal and the Armored Vault 13. And I'm going to use the Tribal armor to begin with as I feel like it's more thematically correct. I finally am able to complete the Ghost Town gunfight quest with no hassle at all. I do a shocking spear throw as I miss Joe Coffin about a foot away and decide, you know, if one doesn't work, a second one will definitely as I take his head and put it on the roof and then decide to take out all the powder ganglers with the rest of the spears. Now I know I didn't mention at the start I'd be using the spears but again because you start off Fallout 2 as a, a leader, no the son of a tribes leader, I felt like it was also quite fitting to use the throwing spears but I think after this point I never use them again. I go back to rebuild my character and for some reason I, I retake melee weapons again. I don't know what happened here because I never planned to ever use melee weapons in this playthrough. There, there's none that fit the character but for some reason I just kept picking it. I must have had an idea at some point. But anyway, I moved past that by silly mistakes of wasting skill points and decide that Snuffles needs his legs fixed as he always does because Snuffles always deserves to get his legs fixed. I used the last of my ammo to kill Mo, which I believe was uh, ammo well spent and decide to grab the hollow tape from the Brotherhood just for later. And I quickly use the Black Mountain exploit so I don't have to go around the big old fence. As I'm making my way downhill I get whacked by an unbelievable sniper shot by some random super mutant and while I try and take a nap, Neil decides to visit me as one of those sleep paralysis demons. I mean, could you imagine anything more terrifying than this sight? and just having the most casual conversation in the meantime. This time I remember to take the correct Black Mountain shortcut through the bear traps. Mark Repcom for later. And check out the price of the bulls are. I mean my god this is going to take a lot of gambling to get this. I mean gambling wasn't followed to right? Right? I head straight over to the Van Graffs and just start stealing everything to cut down on gambling later as it save a bit of time. And I wonder if people, I always see people go to the bathroom to do this, but if you just grab a stealth boy, it's much faster to steal everything just like this. I decide to talk to the king as I want to get his uh, quest out of the way, as I'll need to do it later on anyway. And get my first task to go check out Otis, Ortis, whatever the guy's name is, I don't even remember. It's here where I learned that uh, no matter what you do in the Oris quest line, if you shoot the guys, if you attack Oris straight away, it always, the question always completes the same way anyway, so it doesn't matter. You might as well just kill Oris as he stands at the gate. Walking this far with him is just a waste of time. For some reason the king would not come down to his stage, he decided to hide in his room. He must have saw my raw strength and decided to hide away from me. Same as he speak to a living ball sack. And when I meet Arcade, I decide that I need to get the confirmed bachelor perk as I am not wasting on 75 speech in my stats. Now you're probably wondering why I'm speaking to Arcade and usually in these kind of challenge runs I don't like using companions but because of the kind of stipulation that is Fallout 2 and I have to do the quest relating to Fallout 2 events I'll need Arcade and Cassie and also Rex and Eddie just to get some certain things to trigger in the game but uh, no matter that I've spoke to Elizabeth Kern 
sorted the stuff with the NCR and got my favour with the king. I decided I'll use the passport for the king's favour as I don't want to always sneak into New Vegas through the monorail like I do every time. But I didn't realise that I just made a huge mistake as that will come back and bite me in the butt later. I quickly speak to the sex robot about my snow globes and head straight to the casino to start gambling. Because what else do you do in Vegas when you're here? You know, you gamble and you speak to the sex robot. With 9 luck, mere minutes are wasted in the casinos and I'm finally able to afford the Bozar. You probably noticed that its price is much down after the first time I came here and that's because I started shoving a lot of my stuff into barter just to, you know, to, to quicken up the amount of gambling because, you know, it's not the most entertaining thing to do for the 10th time. But anyway, I've now got my Bozar and I'm deciding that I'm going to run through Prim and up to the Mojave Outpost as I want to have access to Major Knight as early as possible. Plus, I want to get some NCR quests done as well. I feel like for this gameplay, I want to side with the NCR because it feels like the most canonical thing to do as the as the Fallout 2 Chosen One uh, character because, you know, in that story the NCR are there, they help him, the enemy is the Enclave, so it just felt very fitting. So I'll quickly fix up Eddie as I'll need him later on for Arcade Ganon, but anyway, back to what I was saying about the Fallout 2 character, it feels like... I know I've done the NCR a couple times now, so for my next playthrough, I'm definitely going to pick Mr. House. D despite whatever it is I'm going to do, I'm going to pick Mr. House. Because I've not picked him yet, I've picked the NCR twice now. But as, anyway, as you can see on the screen here, I cannot hit Oliver Swank to save my life with this Bozar. And that's kind of the problem with the Bozar. It's a really good LMG, like, hit firing it up close is nice. But using the scope is a real, real waste of time. Anyway, I've arrived at the Mojave Outpost and I'm here to speak to Cass. The reason I'm speaking to Cass, as I'm sure some of you probably know if you played Fallout 2, is that Cass's father is a member of Fallout 2. He can actually be a companion. So, I'm going to need him, so I need to head to Alice McLafferty to start her quest. I quickly head back to Arcade Ganon, as I need to go speak to Dr. Herdron at the, the Camp McCarran, and to speak to Hindron, it actually activates one of Arcade Ganon's... Um, what is it? It's his storyline points or something. You have to do certain things in the game and you have to do like five of them to get the, the character to, to initiate their quest line with you. And doing this one is, you know, two birds, one stone. I'm already going there. I might as well take Arcade with me. I got the confirmed battle perk. Anyway, I send Arcade back to Lucky 38 and I decide to use my barter, my high barter skill to get cast and take her as a companion and do her quest line as it's one of the necessary things to do. As I said, her father in Fallout 2 is a companion, so it only feels right to take her as a companion and complete her questline for her. I head off, and we start to go out to get the Crimson Caravan stuff and meet her caravan when it got blown up. But as you can see, I have accidentally took about four legionary assassins as my uh, companions as well, because for some reason they're just following me. And I get this great shot of Cass as they're trying to intimidate me. But anyway, I head over to all the cows, notice that they're all got a little bit of ash on them, I start to fall in love with the Rotten Brahmin Corpse, but Cass has got no time for my nonsense, and she wants to go beat up uh, two women because they killed her cow or something, I don't know. I shouldn't have said I was going to kill them because you need Alice McLafferty. Well, you don't need her, but it affects your NCR reputation. So after I kill her, I run back, check up with Ambassador Crocker, and luckily everything's still good. I can still do the NCR quest. So after that lucky celebration, I head right over to the Van Graffs and decide to bl uh, commit bloody murder in the name of um, well, Cass, really. And here's I get a very, very fast death, as I'm sure you can see. I died a lot in the Van Graffs. A lot. The screen just starts flooding green so quickly after you attack one of them that is out of all the challenges, out of any playthrough I've ever done of New Vegas, this for some reason was unbelievably difficult. I think a combination of, you know, kind of bad armor, because the Vault 13 armor can only ever get about 8 DT, so it's it's never too strong. But as you can see in this playthrough, I've killed both the Van Graaff, the brother and the sister, and Cass initiates her dialogue with you, just as soon as you kill them. And I get, I gain her perk, you know, I completed the quest, and instantly die, straight after it. And I die again, even my armor starting to disappear and go invisible. They, and I again, I just, I, I just keep dying. I am spamming stim packs as quick as I can. So after I kill both the Vanguards, I decide I'm just gonna book it right out. 
I'm just going to leave the van graphs and head straight over to the other side. And then, boom, I'll just initiate the conversation with Cass by herself and head back and get Arcade Ganon by himself. As the whole quest storyline for Cass is done. So I'll grab him, grab ED as he initiates another quest point with him as well. And head straight over to Repcon as just as you walk in the building, Arcade initiates another dialogue with you for his quest. The next place we're heading over to is the Crash of Artabird, which is covered with hardened centuries, hardened Mr. Gutsies. It's actually quite a difficult fight, but anyway, after I get through that, head down to the Crash of Artabird, and what do you know, Arkigana initiates a conversation straight away. Celebrations are in order, as I've completed many little side quests there that needed to get done, and what better way to celebrate than shooting George in the back? I mean, what else can you do for Christmas? You guessed it, I'm at the boomers now and I agree to give Jack my scrap metal and speak to his love interest. I mean, during the boomers questline I wanted to do something a little bit different this time than the usual, but one thing I'll never not do is listen to good old Pete, as there's nothing better than hearing this story for the 17th time in a week. Jack gets his hole, and for my trouble I get my hole blown up straight across this goddamn room. The two old people seem very happy about Jack getting his hole for the first time and send me off to go find the only thing older than them, this old plane at the bottom of the lake. Pearl seems buzzing, so does Ambassador Crocker. And I am not buzzing as the king has told me I've already used my favour and I have to complete his quest to stop the fight with the NCR. But on the good side I, got, I get rid of Eddie as I've already activated the quest and take Rex as I'll need him later for Jacob's town. This NCR ranger gets far too close for my liking and I decide to wipe out the ants down at the lake. And every time I come to this point, I seem to get attacked by Legion. Every single time. It's here where I find ammo box surplus for the first time for the 5.56 ammo, which I never even knew was in the game. And it's a big problem that I was having in this playthrough of running out of ammo for the Bozar. And the ammo surplus gives you tons for quite cheap. So I decided to use that ton of ammo and go and murder all the chairmen. Now, even after I killed all the chairmen, as you can see, Benny's still up for a chat, which I found very, very strange, as every chairman in here is dead, but I take his head off his shoulders anyway. And Alerio gives me the mark of Caesar to stop the assassins from getting me. I go to steal Pacer's file, spike his jet as I normally do, and tell Crocker the fantastic news that I've just murdered someone in the name of a government, as they like. I let uh, Mr. House know about the platinum chip as he'll give me some caps. I mean... I don't really need the caps, but it's always nice to get some extra caps, get on his good side, get some XP, you know, the good old stuff, and straight after that I head down and murder him. I hit him with a nice 360 jump shot to go back to my MW2 days, and I leave some NCR money in his chest as a sign as a warning for the next person that finds him. I head over to Hoover Dam, agree to murder more people for old Colonel Moore, and meet the MVP of this playthrough, Quartermaster Barden, as he has all the ammo that I'll need. Now, I head straight over to the cans, and as I'm sure you guys know, if you played Fallout 2, uh, the chosen one wipes out the cans there as well. And uh, I don't want to break faith here, I don't want to break canonical, anything like that, so... Uh, my hands are tied, guys. I mean, it's not like I've murdered the cans in every other playthrough ever. I mean, maybe one day I'll do their questline, but you know, it's certainly not today. I head to Caesar's camp as I need more storyline points for Arcade Ganon. And I whisper sweet nothings into his cute little ears, just go, shh, shh, Arcade, it's okay, daddy's got you. I do the same with Caesar. I give Arcade Gan his cookies and milk and make him feel all better again. And I quickly pop into the weather station, as once you get in there, you get all your weapons back. And I'm sure you guys know what happens next. I mean, I've got quite a lot of ammo from old Quartermaster Barton. I've got plenty of surplus, so I am just going to go to town on the Legion. I mean, you also get another storyline point for Arcade by killing Caesar, so that's a good thing. But it's also just something, someone left a comment in one of the previous shorts that I made about murdering all the Legion with a, an LMG, so I thought, to that guy, here you go. I mean, I enter Caesar's tent, I run right back out, so they all start piling in front of the front door. So I can just, you know, line them up and lay waste. I mean, with the bulls are, it's pretty easy. For some reason, Colonel Moore is only interested in talking about the Great Can's murder. I mean, doesn't even mention Caesar's. So I head straight over to the Omerta's to try and get her love and affection in a different way by, um, I mean, by also murdering the Omerta's. Maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. Maybe murdering random groups isn't strong, isn't attractive. 
But for some reason, I think it attracts Alerio because he just finds me and in the Gomorrah for no reason, runs up and just talks to me. And then I, I shoot him. Anyway, um, head back to Colonel Moore. I mean, she still doesn't really seem that impressed by all my great murder. Um, I mean, I've already killed Mr. House for her. I mean, she doesn't even really mention it. I mean, it's it's pretty hurtful. But one person that is noticing my new shoes and my, my new dress is Arcade, and he finally initiates his questline for me. No time to waste, I decide to head right over to Repcon and get the Brotherhood Hollow tapes for me, because I'm heading straight to Hidden Valley for a very secret reason. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering, why am I doing Arcade storyline if this is a Fallout 2 Chosen One playthrough? I mean, the Fallout 2 character and the Enclave characters don't really get on, and well, that's why I'm going to the Brotherhood. I mean, I want to do the Brotherhood stories for them, I want to do their quests, and the reason is, when you play Fallout 2, you don't have to interact with the Brotherhood, but if you do, they'll help you get to the, their garrison, what's it called? The Navarro, they help you get into Navarro, they want you to steal some vertebrate plants, so they, they help you out a little bit. So, in my books, the Brotherhood is someone that you need to help, so I thought, no better thing to do than, you know, do their quest line. And that was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made because the Brotherhood of Steel and Fallout New Vegas, I mean, at least if you take Elder Nak Naknamara's route, sorry, I said that wrong there, it takes so long. It takes so long to complete. I mean, on top of doing the scout stuff, which isn't too hard, just get close by, get it done. But after that, you have to go speak to Senior Knight Lorenzo and you have to go the free Deprit, free, free Deprit? three separate vaults and get, I don't know, air ventilation pieces and Jesus Christ, this took ages. It took, so, and it, I think doing the Brotherhood questline has took longer than my recharger rifle playthrough. I generally think that's true because I had to go visit all the people, you know, all the, the superstars, all the heavy hitters, you know, Vault 22 and all this stuff. I mean, I get it done. I mean, it took ages, but it's not hard. And then, uh, yeah, I've completed all the quests for the for the Brotherhood. Just just one more, and I can get my uh, my power armor training. And uh, if you guys are wondering why I need power armor training now from them, uh, I'll let you know later. However, before I do the Black Mountain quest, there is bigger fish to fry. I'm heading straight to Jacobstown, as I'm sure you know. I gotta speak to this man right here, Marcus. Now, we've spoke to Cass, who is the daughter of a companion, but Marcus is a Fallout 2 companion. Weird he doesn't recognize me, but I recognize him, and he sends me straight over to Doc Henry, because I need to send him off with Arcade. But, right now, he's not willing to help. He's the only member of the Enclave that doesn't help, unless you do a quest for him. So, while I'm doing that, I go out and help Marcus with his problem. No matter what, I gotta do anything Marcus says. And that's why I decide to resolve the issue with caps and not violence. Is that that's what Marcus wants, and whatever Daddy Marcus wants, Daddy Marcus gets. Cause he's he's the big daddy from Fallout 2. And uh, I decide to head straight up to the the Night Stalker cave, get the truth stealth point, and head straight back down to Doc Henry to experiment on a nightkin. I mean, once an enclave, always an enclave. He's experimenting on a nice, lovely person called Lily. And uh, when Kim comes up to get his stuff, I don't quite have the speech, so I just let him go. And Arcade has a nice conversation with me. With that, and this conversation with Marcus about um, Tabitha's reign, I decide to head straight up to Black Mountain. I mean, I need to do the Brotherhood's quest here anyway. Head straight to Black Mountain to end Tabitha's reign. Well, I get Raul out first. Pop in, say hello, say goodbye. Murder Tabitha. Uh, you know, that'll make Marcus happy, I think. I mean, I think that's what Marcus said. I mean pretty sure he said murder his enemies right um maybe i should go back and replay that mission but anyway i murdered marcus's enemies head up there install the the thing install the bee boop for the old um brotherhood and head over to see orion moreno which is such a nice quest you just see him you talk to him and you get to go and arcade initiates a nice little conversation same with cannibal johnson just say hello send him to the cave same with judah krieger just say hello Send him to the cave, right back in with Daisy Whitman who looks like a ghoul and a monster. Send her straight to the cave, tell Edwin Natnamara the good news and get my Brotherhood of uh, Steel power armor training. Head right over to the Remnants bunker, say hello to the boys, let Judah Krieger know that we are helping the NCR as the NCR are my guys. 
the the agree which <laughs> isn't enough for me right now and once that guy dips old uh, orion moreno i decide to put him down as uh, his power armor it would uh, would look pretty good on my uh, my bedroom floor and then on me with sergeant dorian finally proud of me i decide to put on his armor let old judah krieger know about the poor thing he says the armor is now mine they're very very nice these enclave people but Unfortunately, the Enclave armor on, the bulls are in hand, there's only one thing to do. Yep, I'm sure many of you saw it coming, it's time to murder the remnants. Now, I'm sure you know the end of, of Fallout 2. The Chosen One blows up the oil rig, killing um, the president, I can't remember his name, killing uh, Frank Horrigan, and with these remnants still in the New Vegas, I mean, it was the last of the Enclave that had to go. So. I felt like it was only fitting for the chosen one to finish what I started in Fallout 2 and take out the last of the remnants. Arcade Ganon seems completely fine with that. He doesn't even mention, I mean how would he know? He ran off to get his family armor and to head back in. He has no idea what just happened in that place right behind me and I'm not going to tell him because I'm going to start shooting him. And. When you start shooting Arcade at this stage, it's a bit buggy because he doesn't even register that I am any sort of threat. I mean, I just start firing and firing and then out of nowhere he'll just disappear. I mean, he's obviously entered the bunker but he just disappeared so I decided I'm going to follow him in. And I was a bit scared that I couldn't find him but then out of nowhere he, he pops out like a ghost and he, he never puts up a fight and I, I take his uh, family Tesla armor and Colonel Cassandra Moore is very excited. Well, she hates the fact that I helped the Brotherhood. Doesn't know that I killed the Enclave, but secretly, I know deep down in her heart, she she thanks me for what I've done. And to show my gratitude, I decided to go save the president after playing a little prank on the radio. I get a nice uh, cinematic view of my, uh, of my beautiful Enclave character, which everyone protecting the president doesn't even seem to be bothered by i mean this enclave sniper i mean they're they're worried about assassinations they are not worried about me at all but anyway i kill the well the ncr ranger i kill the the legion sniper save the president and uh, let the guys on the radio know that i am uh, that i am the man i am the king and uh, i am ready to head straight to hoover dam and uh, to finish this fight now I don't know what the Chosen One's thoughts would be about the Legion, but I think based on what they do and what he does in Fallout 2, I feel like he wouldn't like them, so I feel like killing them is completely fair game. I think the NCR is probably the only way to do this. It's one of the first times I've ever seen the Brotherhood in the dam. I mean completing the quest and telling them to side with the Brotherhood is, uh, is an interesting way. I've never done that before in a casual playthrough, but here's one of the first times I've ever done it. I get to see these um, NCR heavy troopers just, you know, doing their best. You know I mean, that is a scary roof, and uh, I'm making my way right over this uh, this dam with this bozar. I mean, up until this point, the bozar, I got pretty used to it. I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it, it literally blows their heads right off their shoulders and makes them fly. And uh, yeah, coming up to this fight with the leg, I was feeling, I was feeling pretty confident. Not gonna lie. I mean. With stuff like the boxing tape, the shovel, um, they were pretty difficult because you've got to get up close. But this one, especially with the surplus ammo, when you can see they've got 8,000 in reserve. You can just shoot, hit stim packs and just back up over and over again. And uh, yeah, the leg it goes down pretty, pretty fast. I make sure I take out any Legion mongrels that are still in their cages with nice little jump shots. Get a nice 3D cinematic look of me when General Oliver comes in. Nice big old bows are on the back. My big old power armor. And as he walks in, he's uh, well, he's uh, he's taking his sweet time, isn't he? Any time today, General. We've got places to be, people to talk to. Um, I get a nice big chunk of XP, and showing that yes, you can beat Fallout New Vegas as the chosen one from Fallout 2. If you got this far in the video, I want you guys to to let me know what you think of the audio style that I've done here. I wanted to do a bit more long form audio because before I was doing very quick quick audio clips put in like say one thing go say one thing go but this one I wanted to leave the recorder on a little bit longer so I can 
kind of talk and ramble a bit more and kind of get a bit more of the, the kind of jokes and personality into it. Uh, if you guys like this style a bit more, if you think it's uh, a little bit funnier, then let me know. If you prefer the kind of more dry, um, very to the point style from the other videos, also that's fine. Just uh, let me know down in the comments. I wanted to take some time at the end of this video to, to speak about someone who passed away recently. Um, I mentioned at the start of the video, but uh, Mitten Squad. Now, I don't know anything about Mitten Squad personally. Um, I know there was a lot of talks about um, kind of some of his demons, but I don't want that to be anything in this video. I just wanted to end this video with, like, uh, like rest in peace Paul um, from Mitten Squad, rest in peace Joseph, because I'm sure as you guys can guess, his videos were a huge inspiration. For, uh, for this channel. I mean, my legendary only um, playthrough was inspired by his. I mean, he did one in Fallout, New, uh, Fallout 4 as well, and it was, I found it really entertaining. And I've, the last couple of days after his passing, I found myself watching a lot of his videos again. And I just wanted to, I wanted the end of this video because this video release is my first video after his passing. I wanted the end of this video to be this. So if anyone's ever watching this again in the future, that they hear this part about Mitten Squad. If you've never watched them, I mean, I'm sure I'm not sending any new viewers to his channel, but um, please go have a watch. I mean, he was a, he was a really good content creator. I really enjoyed his videos, really funny. Uh, he's more or less like the godfather of the Fallout Challenge runs on YouTube. I think he might have been the first to do it, at least the first big uh, channel to do it. And uh, yeah, I wanted to leave the end of this video as a, as a remembrance to him. Um, thank you Paul from Mitten Squad, um, Fork Barbarians, all that jazz, the Skyrim playthroughs, everything. Always a great watch, I'll continue watching them and uh, I hope you're resting easy up there buddy because yeah, you were, uh, I took a lot, my videos took a lot from yours and uh, they wouldn't be here, they wouldn't be made if it wasn't for you so yeah, rest easy big guy and uh, I hope you, I hope it's wherever you are it's it's uh, it's cool. The slaughter of the long grass in the crimson caravan caused no end of trouble.